Let's get good. I am the Gamer Under Development, and this is GFW Academy's Arena Creation 101. We are going to be using the base textures for the Hammerstein Ballroom Arena in the Madison Square Garden venue. These have been created by Tacoma. I want to take a moment again to thank Tacoma for allowing me to use them. Tacoma has a massive collection of awesome arenas, and I will give you guys a link to the Google Drive so you can check those out. Of course, make sure to put some love into the comments and things for Tacoma if you do enjoy them. Uh, or give them a shout out on social media. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do, do it because Tacoma's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start by opening up our settings windows here so you guys can see. I've got my explorer window here, which we can use to look at the different textures that are part of that. So this is them. I've renamed them Arena 00 Blackout 2020 because that's the event that I'm going to be using them for. Now, as you can see, they still have the ECW stuff on them. I'm going to go ahead and go to the PWGR window for the Arena Texture Database, and I'm going to add a new ring. And it'll show up with a new mat data here. So we're going to select that one, and I'm going to go to the ring and select the Blackout 2020, which is our ring that we've selected in-game. If I hide the settings, you can see that. Uh, and then I'm going to go over here to Ringside Textures, and this is the Big Garden Arena. That's what it is. It's called Madison Square Garden in the mod pack. Uh, and we do want our barricades on, so that's checked. And we're going to go here where it says Arena 00. And instead of selecting Arena 00, we are going to select... Oh, it doesn't show up. Okay, so I just put these textures there. They're in the, the folder. You can see them in the Explorer window, but they're not showing up here. So what you do in that situation is you go ahead and click Update Ring and Image List. Now when I go in here, I should see it. There we go. Now, I don't want to select Blackout 2020 floor or parts or stage. I just want to select the base Blackout 2020. That's going to tell this to load all the Blackout 2020 textures. That's why the naming conventions are very, very important. Uh, this is for something else. This is for some of the other arenas, so we're not going to mess with that. Don't have any nameplates to use yet, but we can go into that in maybe another tutorial. Uh, and then not using match info text or this other stuff. So this should be fine. I'm going to click here just to make sure that it's saved properly. Oh, whoops, here to make sure that it's saved properly. Now, if we go back, we should see, oh, okay. So I just messed that up. Oh, well, <laughs> that's not a big deal. This is uh, for last year's blackout, and I think the textures for that are actually right here. So we'll just do that to fix it. So it saves when you click on the name here, which can be kind of confusing. So we're gonna go back into the blackout 2020. We're gonna make sure that we have the correct textures, and then we're gonna click here to save it. Cool, we should be all set now. So now if we go into game, it knows that if we are selecting the venue Madison Square Garden and the Blackout 2020 as our ring, that it's supposed to show us this particular custom arena texture. So I'm going to hide my webcam and we are going to load a match and see how it comes out. Now I'll have you guys know I am using two invisible edits. They're just edits with all their sizes set to zero so that we can clearly see the arena because I don't really care about the edits. Uh, so we can see these textures coming in from the ECW arena. You can see already the metallic guardrails. Oof, I hate that little one pixel white edge on the uh, nameplates, but that's something you can get around. I found a trick to deal with it, which I'll go into if I do a tutorial on nameplates. Um, so you can kind of see already that there's some stuff going on here. You can see to the right of the stage a little bit, there is the actual Hammerstein Ballroom stands. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this get in, and then once it is, I will turn back on the screen for PWGR, because I'm gonna actually use the free cam mod to look around and see what I think of the arena in total. Fight. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the PWGR mod back on. I'm gonna go to free cam, I'm going to turn on mouse camera movement, and then I'm going to use my mouse to kind of pan around and just take a look at the arena, see what I think about it. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Um, right now it is using... Hold on, it's got a preset where it's using the cam AI. We don't want that. So we're going to toggle that off, and now it's going to stop moving my camera, and I can just kind of look around. Uh, so one thing I notice immediately about the arena is that I can't really see... The brick wall thing, right? Like, it's pretty cool, but due to the way the camera angles work out, Give up. I can't Give up. really see it. It's there, it's just pretty far back there. Um, and that's that's somewhat problematic. I mean, obviously you can you can change your camera angles and stuff, 
But what you can't control is the camera angles when you're making an entrance. So now I'm not so sure that this is the version of it that I want to use. I'm not opposed to it, like it's still kind of okay and I'm not worried about it too much. But it'd be nice if we could get this somewhere where we could actually see it. In fact, what I'm kind of thinking we could do here that would be pretty cool, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to make this work, but I think we can, we can poke at it and give it a shot, is it'd be really cool if we could split this brick wall and put one side here and one side here, and then just run that metal bar across the top all the way and get that to look okay. Uh, you can see the, the stands here, though, have been wonderfully done by Tacoma. You can see people out in them. That's something we'll be changing because we are going to be doing an empty One, arena show. Uh, these people won't be here when things are done either. So let's go ahead and exit the match now. That's all we wanted. We want to kind of take a look, make sure that it was properly loading the textures. And now we're going to hop over to my image editing software. So I'm going to go ahead and close PWGR on the screen. And instead, you're going to be seeing Photoshop. Uh, now, I'm not on screen. You don't need me for this part. So these are the actual textures that it's loading in the game. They're loaded in Photoshop right now. So if we make changes to these, they will be reflected in the game. And what we can do to confirm that is we can go find our ECW brick wall stage thing, which is right here. And we can basically split this wall apart, maybe. Um, the thing I'm curious about here, and this is a, a good trick that I use, and I'll show you guys something else while we're at it. Give me, give me a moment. I'm going to pull up the Explorer window because I want to show you guys something kind of neat that I'm going to be giving you guys to play with too. Uh, this will be available for you to look at and mess with. This is a reference sheet that I made for Arena 01. So basically what I did was I just placed colored shapes on different parts of the arena textures and then loaded it up in game and you can see where they are. Now this is kind of small, but if you, you know, enlarge this, or actually I guess I could just open this with Photoshop. Yes, yes. Okay, so if we actually enlarge this and we look, so you can see things like line and an equal sign next to it. And then if we go back into that Explorer window and we take a look at our placement ping right here, we can tell, okay, that's probably this one. Wait a minute. Is that that one? No, 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 no. Okay, that is, yeah, that is that one. Oh, it only looks like it's an equal sign because the rope is cutting it in half. Um, you'll you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. I'll toggle the... So you see this thing right back here in the back with uh, sort of this back up left corner here. Is it not showing my cursor? It's not showing my cursor, I don't think. Uh, let me make sure that that's a thing. It should be showing my cursor. But I don't see it. Do you guys see the cursor? Oh, yeah, you do. Okay. So sort of this area right here. See that little area right there that the dancing ant lines are around? If we actually pull up the Explorer window, you can see that that is represented right here in this sort of bottom left wall thing. So basically all we're doing is we're using these placement things to map stuff. Now I'm not gonna be using this one obviously because we're in arena zero for this. Uh, so we're going to go back into our actual stuff. We're going to close this capture because we don't need it. Um, so what I might do here is I might just paint some shapes real quick to kind of give me an idea of the placement of those side things because we wanted to sort of spread out this wall, right? So what I'm going to do to start is this. I'm just going to go ahead and jerk the screen wildly so that you can't tell what's going on because that's effective. Uh, no, I'm going to paint some pink colors right here. This is on a separate layer. You can see over in our layer palette. So I'm not actually affecting the, you know, the actual image. Um, and right here, I think this might actually be it as well. So for this, instead of painting it pink, I'm going to paint it white so that I can differentiate. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. Well, save for web as. This is an old school thing. There's actually a new way to do this, I think, but I've been using Photoshop and stuff for so long that this is just the way that I do it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually went to school for graphic design and I've been working in these, these programs for a very, very long time. Uh, so I'm going to save over our stage ping here. We're going to replace it and then we're going to hop back in here and we're going to go ahead and load it back up. So this is what I was hoping for right here. You guys can see that this 
There's the pink texture and there's the white texture. So what does this tell us based on what we've just done? Well, what it tells us is that directly next to these, where that pink texture falls, we're not actually gonna see that. No matter what we do, we're not gonna see that. Now, on the other hand, it also tells us that right here on these sides where we put these white things, we are actually gonna see it. So what we're gonna do now is exit this match. Oh my gosh, you guys couldn't see that. Okay, well, <laughs> this is the problem of doing stuff in multiple windows like this. Uh, basically, what we did determine there, though, was that the area that we put our white square is actually visible on those outside walls. So work with me here. Here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to come in here, and this is going to look kind of janky at first, and that's okay. You can, you can be janky at first as long as you clean it up later. And we're going to select half of this ECW wall. We're going to jump that to a new layer. Uh, we have to make sure we're selecting the active layer first. So if we jump that to a new layer and we switch over to our movement key or our movement tool, we can see that we can now move this around. Do to do. We're going to move this right over here. And we are going to go ahead and hit control T to transform it. That's going to let us put it in the correct orientation. Now, one thing we're not going to be able to do with this because it's mirrored is we're not going to be able to run that ECW text. Because no matter what happens, that's going to be backwards. Or one way, one side of it will be backwards. So we're not going to worry so much about keeping the ECW thing there. What we really want here is the brick wall. That's that's our goal. So let me go ahead and scale this up. Um, as we can see, we kind of get to that full full sort of size right there. And that's that's not looking gorgeous as it is. Um, we did kind of blow up the texture there a little bit, so you're going to lose some resolution. Now, there's a couple different ways to handle that. Frankly, this isn't necessarily the final version of anything, so it's, it's not that big of a deal to me. What I am going to do here, though, is I am going to go ahead and delete the actual ECW part. And the main reason for that is because I don't want to have to, to deal with the text not being proper or whatever. Uh, so if we really wanted to here, we could kind of stretch this out. Now we don't want to, if we wanted to make it match the height perfectly, what we would do is we would not scale it. We would just stretch it. Um, and that's probably going to look pretty janky when we get in game. But you'll kind of see what I'm going for if we do this. Now you can spend hours and hours and hours doing this, right? So I'm, I'm not even sure that this tutorial is going to be me going start to finish on this because that would be a ton of video, like a crazy amount. Uh, but what it is going to be is me kind of showing you some simple ways that you can work with this stuff. This time I'm actually going to hide Photoshop and I'm going to go in and off Photoshop. I apologize again for this being somewhat uh, disorienting. It's difficult to work with multiple different windows like this. I don't do it very often and I have to keep remembering to come over to OBS and turn off Photoshop so you guys can see the uh, the full screen for the arena, etc, etc. Like this is a hard enough process without having to do all that. Uh, so adding that into the mix definitely doesn't make it any easier. Ah, but there you go. So now you can see it, it looks really bad. The texture quality looks really bad. But you can see that we have managed to move our brick wall sort of onto the, the stage here a little bit more. Now if I do that and I kind of zoom down here, you can see that it's obviously not a tall enough brick wall. Um, we could basically do with some better textures. Although being fair, like these textures are okay from this view, but if you get too close, they kind of look not the best either. Uh, so the best way to do this would be to just go find like an image of a really good brick wall texture and then cut out the parts you needed cut out. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna do that within the, the sort of length of this tutorial because that's a little bit past what we're trying to do here. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to look at some other things that you can potentially change. So like right now we've got all these railings and things and that looks great. Uh, we've also got this kind of simple flooring and we've got this ramp so we can do something with the ramp maybe. I'm going to, for example, show you guys how I intend to empty out the, the arena here real quick. Uh, this is different. Emptying out those guys has to do with custom crowds. That's a whole nother video in and of itself. However, emptying out the arena that's part of the texture is fairly easy because what we're going to do. Okay, so here's Photoshop. I have got my 
shape tool set to rounded rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself a nice red that I like for a theater seat. So this is a, this is an okay red. I kind of like this. Uh, so that's a little bit too round. Can I mess with the roundness while I'm in here? Ugh, no. Uh, it's not ideal. This isn't really the roundness that I like. This is a little bit too round. Oh, I can adjust the radius, I suppose, which is useful. Let's let's just draw a shape and then see if adjusting the radius afterwards will change it. It won't. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set a radius of like 15 pixels beforehand up top. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this rounded rectangle. I don't really want this. That's not quite the shape I was... That, that's better. That's better. Uh, maybe that's a little... No, no, that's okay. Something like that. All right, so I don't really want a rounded rectangle, right? This kind of looks like a chair, but it's not the right shape because we don't want the bottom to be rounded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and rasterize this layer, which turns it into raster graphics instead of a vector shape. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the difference there is that vector shapes are drawn by math, so they're infinitely scalable without losing quality, and raster graphics are pixel graphics. So if you scale them, they can lose quality. Uh, and we're just gonna cut off the bottom half of that. So now we have this kind of vaguely chair shape, right? It kind of looks like a chair. It's about 30 sizes too big for what looks like, you know, this tiny little audience person. Um, but that's okay. For right now, that's that's good enough for what we're doing. So what we want to do is we want to make this look more like a chair. And I'm going to do some easy things for that. I'm going to go into the FX here and I'm going to go for a bevel and emboss. That is way, way too embossed. Um, and we're also not looking for, that looks like, Oof. Inner bevel, that's way, way too much. Uh, I don't know what I was doing that I set the depth up that high, but that's kind of entertaining, to be honest. Uh, so give it a little bit of depth there. That's that's honestly more than I want. I want it to actually... There we go. That's, that's what I'm after. I'm after an actual emboss. Um, I don't necessarily want the stuff on the outside of it here, but that's okay. There are ways to get rid of that. I'm going to kind of bring that... Well, no, it's it's fine to have that at about 50%. Hmm. Take the size down a little bit. That's more like what I'm after right here. Now, you do notice that there's a little bit of sort of color on the outside of the shape. Uh, that is annoying, but there are ways to deal with it. Honestly, a lot of this, too, is just playing with it, right? It's just playing with it and getting what you want. I'm going to take a look at the pillow emboss. It's all right, but it's it's still got that kind of weird outer thing going that I don't like. Uh, I'm not really after a stroke emboss. I'll just take this regular emboss here. This is fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Then I'm going to select our actual shape. I'm going to Command Shift or Control Shift I, uh, depending on which platform you're on. And I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, create a layer from that effect. Now, if I do that, we get this highlight layer right here. If I hit delete, I get rid of all that stuff that's outside. So now we've got this kind of nice thing going on. This is more what we're after here, but there's still one problem. And that's that I don't really want this highlight on the bottom. So I'm going to grab an eraser, which you can get with your E key or by going to the eraser tool. I'm just going to clear this out a little bit. You know, this is, this is cool. I want this chair to kind of have this stuff going on with it, but I don't really want it to have that on the bottom. Okay, so now we're we're kind of looking like a chair. This is remotely looking like a chair. It's still not great. I might actually even take these off here and then grab like a blending brush and blend it down a little bit. To kind of, ooh, no, not that. That's not good. Not that either. What are you doing, blending brush? Why are you like picking up things? Let's see. Oof, yeah, that's that's rough. I don't know why it's doing that. That's way, way too much. Um, okay, so blending isn't really doing what I'm wanting here. And I, I have to admit, guys, I'm very, very new to using the blending brushes, so it could just me, be me doing it wrong with those. Uh, one thing that I know does kind of do exactly what I'm after is the clone stamp tool. So we're going to go ahead and switch to the clone stamp tool. I'm going to hold down Alt and pick this part that I like. And then I'm just going to kind of position this and paint it in there. Uh, maybe a little too much there. So fade it back a little bit. That's that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, we should be able to do the same thing, but we'll want to go to the shadows layer for this side. Okay. 
That looks pretty good. It's a little lumpy there. I'm not really worried about it too much because this is going to end up getting much, much smaller anyway. I'm going to select right here, take our highlights, close that. When we shrink this down, it's not really going to matter. I'm going to select these three layers and merge them because we want this all to just be one layer. So now we've got our little chair here. And now I'm going to start looking at the size of the audience here. Now this is way, way too big to be a chair back for somebody in this audience, right? The, the chair is the size of the audience. I'm just going to scale this down here, make it more reasonable to the audience's size. So maybe right about there. Okay, so now we've got a chair that, you know, could reasonably be behind this guy's back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. Uh, so I believe that there is a way to do this quickly. But I'm not seeing it. I know in Illustrator you can literally just tell it, hey, do this again. Um, but that's not really working for us here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a whole bunch of chairs. Just put them all next to each other. Try to line them up decently. Uh, and this is going to give us some different sort of chairs in our audience that are empty because there is a global pandemic right now, so people should not be here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these chairs and I'm going to put them together. So now we have a row of chairs, right? There we go. Got a whole row here. Pretty nice. Going to go ahead and make a copy of that row. Now with our copy, I'm going to actually move it behind the first row. I'm going to kind of jut it a little bit here. So we'll be right about there. Um, and we can kind of cheat it a little bit here with us needing one more one more chair to fill things out. Although I guess we don't. I guess we don't. We can leave it like that. That's actually fine. Uh, and then now if we wanted to, we could combine both of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a group with both of them in it. And then I'm going to drag a copy of both of them out. And that's just so that I preserve both of them in a clean form. Then I'll merge them together, and now I can go ahead and take this and just replicate sort of endlessly. We can just put it behind, and we're starting to see some chairs, right? Like this is this is starting to look like empty seating rows, which is what we want. There's a pandemic going on. Nobody Nobody's actually coming to the show. We're all watching from home. We're at a really cool arena. It's a historic arena. It's where ECW used to do all their shows. That's why we're here. But at the same time, everybody's home because there's a global pandemic going on. You should not be here right now. Uh, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and merge all of these rows together. And that's just so we have that nice block of seats. And we can use that over here to fill in these later. But for right now, we've got our nice row of seats, right? And that's a little too, uh, a little too clear, maybe a little too obvious. Like they're not going to be that bright given where they're at in the arena. Uh, so what we might do is we can kind of pull those up a little bit if we want to. But we don't need to. First of all, we need to hide group one. So we can get a clear look at where they're at. Right there seems about right to me. Could scoot them over a little bit, but I think they're fine right there. Um, one thing we may want to do here is actually cut this off so that it kind of lines up a little more with the edge of the balcony that we see here. So we do that. Uh, the other thing we're going to want to do here is sort of fade these out. They're way, way too bright, right? Like you wouldn't be shining lights on your empty seats. That's not really the way that wrestling shows work. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the gradient tool on a new layer here. And we can just come in like that. It's not really what we're going for, though. So what I'm going to do instead is we'll undo this. Uh, mind you guys, Photoshop is not home based for me. Home based for me is Illustrator. Uh, we'll just delete it. That's fine. Clear that out. And then what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and draw ourselves a working area here. I'm going to do that with the rectangular selection tool. Go ahead and grab this. Say, look, I want you to work, but I only want you to work in this area right here. This is what I'm after. Then I'm going to go ahead and change our colors to default so that we have a black color. I'm going to make sure that our gradient is black to invisible or, you know, zero opacity, and then I'm just going to drag across here. Okay, so that might be a little bit darker than we really want it to be. And it's also kind of weird because you would expect this gradient to kind of be reversed. It should be darker further up now that I think about it. So we'll do that. Okay, so that's a little bit better, but as you can see, our front is still a little bit too bright, right? We want those faded out more. 
So we're actually going to go past the limits a little bit. It's a little bit better. But let's just go full on, right? Something more like that. That seems okay. Uh, I still kind of want it to be more. I want some black on the front seats is basically what I'm after. Okay, there we go. That's that's very nice. That's very nice. As you can see, that actually already looks kind of great, right? Like it already looks like those seats are just kind of blacked out. If we really want to, we can multiply this layer as well, and that'll actually cast the black across the thing behind it. Uh, so you'll see a little bit more come through when it's multiplied than when it's not, especially if we play with opacity. So we could fade it in and out here if we wanted to. We could go to like 95% to really fine tune it if we wanted to. And now if we go ahead and save this over our stage, when I load it up, you're gonna notice that those seats look empty. That's what we're going for. We want the seats to be empty because there's nobody here. Alrighty, saving that up. Let's go give it a look. Let's see how this does. I'm gonna go ahead and remember to turn Photoshop off. Apologies for that again, folks. And then when this loads up, the first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna skip our entrances and I'm gonna jump over to PWGR, which is the patcher, and make sure that I've got free camera on. Yeah, things are gonna be messed up for a second. That's because we've got to realign that camera to get the view that we're after. But yeah, you can see, so now those seats that were full before, those are empty now. This is a arena, an arena during the pandemic. Those seats are all empty. That looks great, actually. I think that came out pretty well. Like, for what we did there, for the, the amount of effort that that took to make it happen, that actually looks pretty great as far as being just empty seats. Now we kind of want to spread that over to these other seats here. I'm actually digging the, the brick wall thing here. And for this back wall, what I might do is I might just replace that with a logo for the event, right? So let's let's do that. This is actually coming along pretty nicely, guys. I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how well this is coming along with just some simple work here. And we replace. Oh my god. Photoshop hasn't been on this entire time. Guys, I'm killing me. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna show you all of this stuff again real quick. Uh, so in fact, I'll just, let's do this. Let's open our history panel, window history. And this will allow us to go through a lot of the different stuff we've done. So we'll come over to say here, and I'll just play through this and explain to you guys what's going on. So here we're messing with layer visibilities, changing the opacity, uh, moving it around to get it positioned like I was talking about. Here we're doing that transform thing where we hold control and we drag it to, to warp to what we're after. Uh, here we mess with the layer visibility again, add our layer mask in right here, but we haven't painted the mask yet. So now we're gonna paint the mask. As we go down, we're just kind of painting, painting, and that's giving us, right there, we were cleaning up a little bit. I am so sorry, guys. This is the, the tough part of doing these types of videos. Uh, so we're going to move our shadow over here. That's when we created duplicate shadow. Then we go ahead and merge those shadow layers. And now we're going to be transforming them to fit that. Uh, and I'll show you guys once again real quick how to do those different transformations in just a moment. So we dragged our layer mask over and that gave us the nice cut out there. A lot of this is Photoshop skills, like just playing in Photoshop is gonna make you better in Photoshop. I'm really, really sorry that that wasn't up guys. It's like I said, it's it's an unusual workflow for me. Um, but to show you real quick how keystoning works because that was one of the major, major points there. I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, balcony shadow so that I know for my own reference. This is gonna be balcony seating. Um, so real quick, just to show you how to keystone, I'm going to draw a square, I'm going to fill it with white, and I'm going to say, okay, I want it to, to fit this balcony right here. So if I hit Control T to transform and I start scaling, you'll notice this isn't going to do it. This is, you know, that, that at least gets the corners kind of lined up, but that's not really what I'm going for here, is it? Uh, it's not. What I'm going for is it matching up to this. Now, if I hold down control while I pick one of these points, I can actually kind of drag it and, oh, oh, look, now it's now it's a little bit closer. But if I hold control and I pick this corner, then I can move just this corner. And if I hold shift while I'm doing that, you can see it keeps that line straight. And now we've kind of painted the correct area, right? It's not perfect necessarily, but it's pretty close. 
Uh, if we wanted to, we could go to transform here and grab just this corner and bring it in a little bit, make sure that's right. Yeah, it seems okay. But yeah, so that's that's how you keystone stuff. That's what we were doing for that keystoning process. I I can't even, guys. I am so, so sorry that that wasn't up while I was doing it. Um, yeah. This is why it's rough to work like this. So, gonna go ahead and close that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. So we're gonna skip our intros here, because obviously we don't want to see the Trons. I think this is why I actually didn't what? use this arena originally when we did this show, was because of the Trons. Uh, okay, so we've got Give our up. free camera movement turned on, and look at that. How do you guys feel about that? Can you not change my camera angle, please? I don't want to use the camera AI right now. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, now we've got empty seats. This is what we're after. I mean, this isn't really what you'd be after as a professional wrestling promoter, but yeah, we've got empty seats. Now the problem here is that those are blurred out so that you can't tell that the people are people. So the pillars look kind of jank here, but I mean, we could clean the pillars up a little bit too. Seven. But as you can see, we've already got some empty Nine. seating going there. That's pretty nice. Ten. Oh, Invis Eleven. is going to get counted out versus Twelve. Invis here. 13. Yeah. 14. 15. Also, I, I don't know if that's the correct voice for her. That seemed really weird. Anyways. So yeah, this is uh, getting closer, getting better. Liking the brick wall texture, liking the seating situation we've got going on here. Uh, frankly, we might blur out the seats a little bit. Uh, we could bring in some of those edge shadows on these Give seats up. like we did on these ones to make them Give look up. correct. Might even bring some edge shadows in from this side to make that soften a little bit as well. Yeah, I mean, there is there is no perfect, right? Like, we could blur these a little bit and they would probably fit a little bit better with the blurred pillars as well. That's something to consider. Maybe we'll do that. God, I can't even imagine how much time I spent doing that stuff and you guys couldn't see it, and I'm just super embarrassed, guys. Super, super embarrassed. So I'm going to pop over and correctly turn on my Photoshop here so you guys can see what I'm doing. You don't just have to watch me talk about it. Um, I may just... You know what, guys? I'll just cut that part out. I'll just cut that part out. It'll be fine. Um, all right. Let's... This is such a, a weird, weird workflow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and find these balcony seating layers and I'm going to go ahead and try to blur them a little bit. Uh, we don't need any of that stuff. That's not, oops, that's not really what I'm after. I want effects, but I don't want these effects. These are not the right effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer and I am going to duplicate it and close the first one. And that's just me being safe and not destroying the only one I have. Uh, and then here I'm going to apply the layer mask and what that'll do is Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time. Bye!